the end of the day, we are investing in a product at the early stage, Danny, which is really the founder, no. right? So for us, you know, for you as an early stage VC, it's about the founders. For us, it's about the managers, right? We're really trying to understand what differentiates these people to make them special. A lot of ways, that's what you're looking for when you're doing a direct investment. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by JVentures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leomitech, sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest Labs, Synergy Global, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, Birthright Excel, Serona Partners, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Hello and welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Meet Amit Kurtz, general partner at Sweetwood Ventures, an Israel-focused venture capital fund of funds. Prior to co-founding Sweetwood Ventures, Amit was a lawyer at APM & Co, where he represented private equity and venture capital funds and high-tech companies in all of their corporate and commercial affairs. Amit was previously recognized by Forbes as one of Israel's brightest leaders under the age of 30, Forbes 30 under 30, and he holds a master's degree in business administration, majoring in management of technology, innovation and entrepreneurship at Tel Aviv University. Amit Kultz, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you so much for joining me today from Tel Aviv. How are you? Good, Michael. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm looking forward to spending the next 20 minutes diving right. deep, uh, as deep as we can in 20 minutes, into uh, you know, what you're doing and what you're doing with Fund of Funds and with the Israeli investment ecosystem and talking a little bit about Sweetwood Ventures and how you see investments in this domain, how you see investments in this technology and, and the differentiation between fund of funds versus direct investments and how your own personal journey is intertwined within all this. So it's going to be a, a really fun 20 minutes. And thank you very much for being here. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, a pleasure to be here. Looking forward to this. Well, t- tell me just a little bit about Sweetwood Ventures. What, what is this? What is this organization that you're a general partner at and you've been there for, for quite some time? And then I'd love to talk a little bit higher level about the ecosystem and how you fit into it. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, so Sweetwood Ventures, we're, we're essentially a fund of fund for Israeli VC. Um, we today manage about $250 million across two flagship funds, the smaller funds with much more of a dedicated strategy towards smaller managers. Um, our first fund was launched in 2018. Our second fund was launched um, in 2021. Really, our idea and what we try to do at Sweetwood is to allow our investors to invest in a diversified approach into Israeli venture capital. Right. So mm-hmm. our job is basically to select the best funds in the market. We have a very focused approach um, because we only like to invest in a select number of managers. Our really our agenda and what we try to do is, you know, invest in a top 10% of fund managers in the local ecosystem in Israel. Um, and then what we do, so we allocate 70% of our assets towards investing in what you call primary investments into these managers. So we just come to a fund and we start investing with them when the fund starts. Um, and then we combine with that strategy, we do 15% of secondaries and funds. So we buy mm-hmm. more mature positions, which is a way for us to kind of ease the J curve and the liquidity profile of typical venture capital funds, which usually take a long time until they distribute returns and capital back to investors. And the last part that we do is we basically double down on some of our funds winners. So we work very closely with our portfolio managers and we co-invest with them in some of their top uh, companies. Today, we have a portfolio of about 10 fund managers that we've invested with them. With some of them, we've already invested across two vintages. So we invested our first one. We obviously, you know, really want to follow all of our managers. Our agenda is to invest with our managers over decades, you know, in multiple vintages. Um, and yeah, we're, we're today in the middle of rolling out our, our second vintage and, you know, things are looking pretty cool and, uh, you know, fun signs. Incredible. So, so I'm hearing three different pillars as to what, what Sweetwood really is about. What, one of which is this is idea of, you know, investing in funds. It's a fund of funds, selecting the top uh, fund managers in the Israeli ecosystem and investing directly in them, uh, or d- directly in them meaning the fund, but then you have this 15% in order to purchase shares in, in more mature areas of the fund. So not necessarily the first closing when there's still, you know, who, who knows what, what the portfolio will be like. Now you have some indication but then also being able to double down on the winners. Tell me a little bit about fund of funds as a concept. You know, it, the, the process of investing in a fund rather than perhaps a direct investment. 
Right. So, so I think there's, you know, fund of funds is an interesting business, right? I think there are similarities in a lot of ways to sort of early stage investments, right? And end of the day, we are investing in a product at the early stage, Danny, which is really the founder, no. right? So for us, you know, for you as an early stage VC, it's about the founders. For us, it's about the managers, right? We're really trying to understand what differentiates these people to make them special. A lot of ways, that's what you're looking for when you're doing a direct investment. So there's some similarities in that. The non-similar things are really, you know, we're not looking for them to grow and scale on building a product because their product is making successful investments. And our job right. as, 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 you know, LPs and investors and funds is to look at how they think, how they operate, what brings them value, why do they get access to the best, you know, entrepreneurs in the market, and how is that going to trickle on over the next decade? Because, you know, when we invest in funds, we're investing across very long-term horizons. So we're really, really looking to build partnerships for decades. And like I said, you know, more than decades with these fund managers and see how they can excel for the long run by investing. Now, you mentioned something really interesting, which is, you know, how do we also do secondaries next to that and co-investments, which are a bit, you know, different skill sets, right? Because fund analyzing is really your job is to understand managers. You know, when you do secondaries or when you do co-investments, your job is much more to understand, you know, direct investments. But we really believe that actually our fund investments are the catalyst that allow us to understand the direct investments a lot better because we build this phenomenal network of a lot of GPs in our, in our, you know, close network. We're investors of GPs. You know, we get access to intimate information. We can track companies. We can interact with these GPs, learn about what's going on in these companies and then really zone in on those winners. And that allows us to get, you know, multiple points of view over what's going on in the direct startups. And we feel that that gives us an extra layer of insight that, you know, normal investors, they're just scanning the market and don't enjoy the leveraging of the network that we built through our fund the fund uh, uh, investment strategy in Jewel. The discussion that I, that I want to have a little bit is about, you know, the process in which one decides what fund to invest in. So what information do you have? What is the sort of the process that you're going through to determine whether this is a group or this is a fund that you want to invest in as a whole, perhaps in comparison to how you would invest in a direct company? Right. So, so, so first of all, like, I think what you have when you invest in a fund is, is, is a track record, right? Which is a place where you start. It gives you a good entry point because you can see what the manager has done in the past. And, you know, one of the funny things is that, you know, in finance, the first rule when you go into finance class 101 is like, you know, past performance does not predict future performance. Well, that's wrong when you talk about venture capital, right? If you look at historical data globally, um, and also if you look actually at some research we've done on the Israeli VC market specifically, the probability of a top quartile manager to consistently outperform, meaning to stay as a top quartile, or let's say second quartile at worst, is actually quite significant in venture capital, right? So only about three or 4% of venture capital managers between their vintages move from being a first quartile manager to last quartile manager, right? Now, if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense when you look at venture capital, right? Because venture capital is an asset where brand has this sort of cyclicality motion to it, right? So how do brands like, let's say Sequoia, right? The best example probably in the world of brand creation, right? Sequoia started investing, had great entrepreneurs, right? Built a great track record. What happens next? Entrepreneurs recognize that Sequoia was able to invest in great companies. They want to get capital from Sequoia. So Sequoia continues to have the cyclicality effect for the last almost 50 years of getting attracted and building his brand. And that creates a huge cyclicality effect where you're getting more exposure and greater access to the best funds. So for us, the first thing when you walk in the door, you know, the first thing you want to see is kind of like, okay, what have you done? And we clearly know that this is probably going to have an indication, implication of what you will do, right? And that's kind of step one. Um, then from there, so we, just to we make sure that really given that, does it make sense to assume that does it doesn't make sense to assume that fund of, that, you know, first time venture capitalists, perhaps fund of funds is not necessarily the right avenue for them as they're fundraising because they just don't have enough information to provide to the fund of funds to give indication as to what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. So, so it's a, it's a great question. So, so the answer is yes and no. Right. Obviously, when you have less of a track record, less of experience, it's obviously harder to raise for more institutional investors like us. Right. Having said that, we always look for new emerging managers 
Um, we always want to interact. We always want to know them. Um, you know, the end result and the probability that you'll raise is probably low. And at the end of the day, you know, we do three investments every year, right? We only invest in three managers. And most of these managers are managers that we've already invested in, but we try to op keep an opening always open for new managers. It's just that the probability that you'll get an allocation when we probably see 30 new managers a year, there's probably one or two allocations that you're fighting for. So you really need to excel inside these group of managers um, in order to warrant a ticket. So what I'm saying is kind of like, it, it definitely is possible, but it is a harder task as an emerging manager. And, and, and you see that across the board with statistics. The interesting thing is, by the way, about emerging managers is they actually tend to outperform the market. So if you look at a benchmark of emerging managers, which is vintages, emerging managers usually describe in our universe, like well, first vintage or third vintage. Um, statistically, they tend to perform better than more established managers um, over huge data sets. Like if you look at the US market, that has been the case. So for us, we, we understand this data, right? And we understand that we need to create in our portfolio this fine balance between getting new managers into our portfolio, but still keeping allocation to our established managers. By the way, as, as a side note, one of the things that we do actively in order to continue engaging with these new managers that are coming is we built this program called Suite with NextGen. Um, it's basically a program that sort of tries to teach you everything about venture that has nothing to do with investing. So how do you build a fund? How do you structure a fund? Legal work. How do you speak to LPs? How do you build a deck? How do you build a data room, right? We have a lot of smart people out there that never raise a fund. And there's a lot of, you know, not art, but science, right? There's a lot of processes that you need to go and things you need to do to, um, to get them to the most efficient process and end up raising capital. So what we did is, is we opened a, you know, free registration program. We had huge demand for this. We had about 70 people apply. We ended up selecting eight of really who we believe are the next emerging stars of Israeli VC. You know, we had people from top funds like NFX, TLV, um, really top participants. You can see it over our LinkedIn page of what we've done. And, you know, we did a process of these people for eight sessions, top interactions with all the best investors in the world. We brought big fund of funds, big institutionals, big family offices, top lawyers to speak to them. And, you know, that gives us a great opportunity to be intimate with these people, right? And then if I end this by saying, how do you want to raise as an emerging manager? Build relationships, right? Start interacting with people like us early. Start building a repertoire. You know, just meet with us for coffee, right? Come together for advice, you know? And the longer we spend, the more we spend time with you, the better we'll get to know you, the higher the probability we'll invest in you. Once that takes place, once you've partnered with fund managers, you mentioned that you do about th th three of those a year, well, what is sort of the day-to-day -day like look? So, so you mentioned that you're very data driven and, and obviously then you, you do have the ability to double down on, on, on winners and secondaries for, for funds that are more mature. So what, what does sort of the day-to-day -day look like for you once you've already sort of decided, okay, these are the funds that we're going to work with for now. We're not stressed in deploying more capital as of now, but we want to still, you know, make sure that we're that, that we're positioning ourselves correctly. So what, what is it that you do at that point? So, so, so for us, the way we look at it is we don't want to be passive LPs. We don't want to be the guys that just deploy capital and you don't speak with for the next couple of years, right? At the same time, we don't want to be too cumbersome on our GPs, right? We want to give the value that we can bring to the table, but only if they want to take it. So the way I, I like to phrase it is we're kind of almost at the service of our GPs. You know, there's places where we can add a ton of value. You know, we have a lot of experience around how to fundraise, right? You need connections to other LPs. We have those in our network. Um, for example, we had a manager um, that had a very interesting uh, GP-led secondary done on his fund, right? That's a very complex transaction. We've done it ourselves. We've been part of the other side of GP-led transactions. You know, we were, you know, I think, at least from our side, we felt we were very meaningful for this GP in that process. You know, us being able to give it feedback, understand what's going on. The second place where we try to help and interact a lot with GPs is we see a lot and we have a lot of data. So we try to A, produce reports and B, speak to our GPs. You know, now that, you know, there's obviously some turmoil going on through financial markets, you know, we're usually, I hope to so, are one of the first phone calls of our GPs because we see a lot of things are going on. Everybody's kind of calling us, everybody's speaking to us and they're trying to understand what their peers are doing, what their colleagues are doing which approaches have we seen that historically work in these type of environments. And that's kind of our day to day, you know, after we deploy the portfolio, there's a lot of work of just understanding what's going, 
on in the portfolio, adding value. And the last part I would say, I like to call this like our hidden, like ongoing due diligence. The reality is that we're always due diligence, right? As opposed to a startup investment, you invest once. Yes, you're going to continue to diligence for the follow on round. We continue to do diligence for the next fund, right? So we try to interact with our GBs, try to understand what they're doing good well, what they're not doing so well at. And then that allows us to come in when they come to raise their next fund a lot smarter, right? We already kind of have a good idea of whether we want to continue, which 99% of the time the answer is yes, right? But we have a better knowledge and a better understanding of how this GP operates simply because we worked with with them for a few years already. Okay. I mean, well, where do you fit into this? So, you know, if working in fund of funds, not, not a likely position in venture capital today, I assume that the vast majority of, of funds in the VC world are direct funds. Where, where is sort of mm-hmm. your head in terms of where you're at and, and your position within this ecosystem? So uh, I, I love <laughs> our place, right? We're, we're sort of like a VC, but we're not a VC. And I think that plays really well with, with a few things, right? I think it plays well with my personal DNA, right? I think what we're very good at is understanding fund managers. We're getting better, obviously, at doing direct investments. We have a phenomenal portfolio, but we're, we're learning how to do that. We all come, myself and my partners, from a legacy of being, you know, fund selectors and manager selectors. And, and I personally, you know, I, I love doing this fund of fund wars, right? Um, I think for me also, I have huge conviction in this model. I, when, when, when I started this journey at, at Sweetwood Ventures, when we came here and we said, okay, we're building a fund of fund, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I was not convinced this is how you should be investing um, in venture capital. And then I started digging into a lot of the data and a lot of the research about fund of funds and venture capital. And when you think about venture capital, right? So there's a few interesting things about it. It's, it's a game of access, but it's also a game of access at the fund level, right? With some of our funds, it's not about us being able to give $10 million. It's about them accepting us as investors. Okay. Now, if you look at it, fund the funds tend to have better access than a common investor, right? So one of the things we're selling is access. The second thing that we're selling is expertise, right? We do this every day. We engage with the market. We feel that we have better insights to do a better job than a normal investor just walking in and selecting a few funds. Now, how does that translate to me really believing in the fund the fund structure? is the fact that fund the funds actually outperform at the median venture capital funds. Which, think about that for a second, right? Fund the funds, and everybody will tell you, we have wow. another layer of fees, should be more expensive. That's actually a role. The median fund the fund outperforms the median venture capital fund. Globally, historically, this is obviously validated data. Now, obviously, a particular fund has an ability to probably return, you know, six or seven or eight decks, the probability that you're going to have that type of outlier return in a fund of fund is lower because we are more diversified. Now for us at Sweetwood, the trick is how do you become diversified so you reduce risk, but don't reduce too much risk. And that's where I really believe in, in what we're doing. So what we do is we don't invest in a lot of funds. We only invest in eight managers because we want to make sure that these eight or nine managers will really have an impact. So if one of our managers is going to return 10 or 15 X or even seven X, right? That's going to have a meaningful impact. So our fund, the fund can generate alpha. Now, if you take that and combine that with a bit of diversification that we have for me on, on a risk adjusted basis for most investors, right? Accessing a country like Israel from a fund, the fund perspective just makes a lot of sense. And if I had to step back and redo this and say, Hey, where would I want to put my money? I'm very convinced that a fund of fund is a great tool for many investors to invest in VC. And that's where this thing kind of catches me. I love it. I mean, thank you so much for uh, spending these 20 minutes with me. Uh, not, not every day that, that I get to do an episode with, with the fund of funds, especially in the Israeli market. And, and, it's, and it sounds like, and, and I love the, the way that you're thinking through uh, Sweetwood Ventures. You know, we're, we're a VC, but we're not really a VC. But we're kind of like a VC, but not really, because you have... You do have the, the beautiful parts of the VC, but you also have the beautiful parts of, of not being a VC and, and having the ability to, to take your time, do proper diligence to, to back a diversified portfolio, but then double down where it really counts and, and be a meaningful. And it sounds like a, a really meaningful partner to those that you partner with. So thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate the time and, uh, and, and your contribution to our ecosystem. 
And uh, best of luck with Sweetwood and stay safe and stay healthy. Mm-hmm.